welcome to Red Couch um, here at PCI Messe Forum. My guest this morning is Martin Hierholzer, General Manager and Vice President Industrial Power from Infineon. And uh, we're talking about energy efficient efficiency, what else? And the question is, is energy efficiency more than just a buzzword? Hey Hierholzer. Everybody's talking about energy efficiency. Is it really something substantial, or is it just a word that's used by marketing departments to sell more products? This is a nice question, a little bit provocative, I guess. So if we consider that the world energy consumption is increasing year by year by 2 to 3 percent, and uh, this means in the next 25 years we need roughly 50 percent more energy. Mm. So if we look at these figure, figures, we can ask ourselves, where should this energy come from? This 50% more compared to today, should it come from oil, from gas? Um, I guess no, because of CO2 emission. Should it come from nuclear power? I think with the experience of um, Fukushima, this is also questioned. So I guess the only chance we have to cope with this challenge is to save energy. And later on, I can explain you with some examples how we can do this. And uh, I guess this is the only chance we have. Therefore, a clear no. It's not marketing. It's a must. Okay. So, products are getting more and more efficient. At the same time, you mentioned that the consumption of energy is still increasing. So, how can this contradiction be explained? And does it mean that efficiency is not the only uh, or not even the most important aspect? I guess it's the most important aspect, and I tell you why. I have some numbers. So, when did we start to consider energy efficiency or energy savings the first time in the last 100 years? It was in the oil crisis in the 70s. Here, the whole world, it became obvious to the whole world that we have to save energy. So, what happens in the last 40 years? If you just look at the numbers, what happens? In the last 40 years, the world population increased by 85%. That's a lot. The same time, the GDP, the gross domestic, uh, domestic product worldwide, increased by 250%. So people are getting more and more effective and productive. They need energy. So 250% increase of GDP, but only 100% increase of energy consumption. 100% is a lot, so we doubled the energy consumption in the last 40 years, but we grew clearly under proportional with the GDP. And this is a clear sign that we are able to save energy, that we have saved energy a lot in the past. And I think this is the no contradiction. It proves and it shows that we are able to save and that we have been successful, but we can do even more. So otherwise, the energy consumption would be much higher if we yeah. had such efficient... Exactly. Course. We would consume, if we would have not done anything, we would use 50% more power mm -hmm. today than con compared to what we use. Okay. So we have really been successful. Okay, so um, what makes power electronics really efficient? Can you explain that a little bit from the yeah. technology, technological point of view? We have to distinguish between two things. The efficiency of power electronics itself mm -hmm. and the efficiency of a system using power electronics or not using power electronics. And I think this is the biggest lever. So power electronics is basically an enabler to have efficient systems. This means, for example, if we look on an electric drive, an electric drive without any power electronics needs 100% power. And if we add power electronics, then we can save 30 to 50 percent, for example, for a pump or for any kind of electrical drive, because power electronics is switching current and voltage in a behavior to adapt it to the load. And this is how we can save. And here we can save 30 to 50 percent, and this is the, the biggest aspect in using power electronics. Now, power electronics itself can, of course, also be efficient. And here we talk about power semiconductors. Especially in the past years, we have, for example, seen new topologies in power saving data, for example, three level configurations, especially in the applications where efficiency of the system is extremely important, like solar inverters, for example, like uninterruptible power supplies. Mm -hmm. Here, efficiency is a clear key, and um, here we see new topologies, and I guess 
In future, these topologies, like for example three level, will also come up in other applications to increase the efficiency of the power electronics. On the other hand, we have with silicon carbide as a new material something in our hand which has uh, the chance to reduce losses by roughly 50% compared to today's silicon solutions. And this is a new material which is a real opportunity for the future to increase efficiency in power electronics. Mm -hmm. So in many parts, we're already talking about 95% efficiency, sometimes even more. So what can be done when you're already close to 100%? So more than 100% efficiency is impossible, isn't it? That's impossible. And I'm saying perhaps in some applications it might also not make sense to spend a lot of money to go from 97 to 99. From the ec economical point of view, this might not make sense. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you look at a system which has 96% efficiency and you increase it to 98, this is from the efficiency point of view not a big step, but for example from the losses in the power electronics, you reduce them by 50%. And I think this is the key. You can reduce the losses, you increase uh, you uh, reduce the cooling system, you increase, uh, you reduce the size of the whole inverter, of the whole power electronics, and this leads to a higher acceptance. And there we have to work on. People should accept to use power electronics, because today it's an additional part in the system, which enables to reduce energy, but it's an additional part. So what we can do is increase the efficiency of the power electronics itself, increase the reliability and the lifetime of power electronics because the reliability of the system should not suffer because it becomes more efficient. It should be the same. And this is the part where we can be active, not only increasing efficiency of power electronics, but also lifetime, reliability, size and cost. And there we have to work on, besides pure efficiency. <laughs> So, um, as you all have already mentioned, power electronics are only one part of a machine or of a system. Um, and how big is this part? How big is the influence of power electronics regarding efficiency and how important is the uh, interaction of all components in a system? So, it's not only the power electronics, there are a lot of other components that are important as well, aren't they? Yes, there are a lot of components. I take it again the example of an electrical motor drive. We start with the grid with the mains, for example. Mm -hmm. The today's efficiency of our grids is not much better than 90%. So 10% today we lose already in our grids because we don't have smart grids today. Another point then is the motor itself. There the efficiency is also around 90%. For higher power a little more, for lower power a little bit less, but also 90%. And the power electronics itself is today roughly at 95%. So the power electronics is already the best in efficiency, I would say, but it's only one part. And, for, and here again, the most important point for me is that power electronics enables the whole system to save energy. This is again the key, being an enabler for reducing losses in the system. And here we talk about 30, 40, 50 percent, and this is the most interesting aspect. Just use power electronics and you are efficient. <laughs> yeah. Is it that simple? I guess yes. <laughs> okay, but uh, isn't the efficient power electronics useless if the rest of the system isn't efficient? Yeah, but about what numbers are we talking here? So, f like I said, for the motor we are talking 90, 95, 96 percent. Okay. Here we can gain some percentage point, single digit. The same for the mains, if we go, for example, to more intelligent um, grids, we can go from 90 percent to 95, again, single digit. And adding power electronics, we can gain 30, 40, 50 percent. This is much more. This is the real lever. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you have already mentioned the catastrophe in Japan. And the German government thinks about fast ending for nuclear power plants. What impact would this have on uh, power electronics and on companies like Infineon, for example? Yeah, reducing nuclear power means the energy should come from something else. Yeah, we need the energy. And um, what can we do? We talked about oil and gas. I don't think that this is an alternative. Also coal, it isn't. Yeah, what can we do? We talk about renewable energies. This is an alternative. This we can do much more. I think we have, with, for example, with offshore wind parks, examples where we can produce much more energy. 
and um, renewable energies need power electronics. Without power electronics, this does not work. So this is a real opportunity for power electronics. Another one is smart grids. I mentioned this. We can increase the efficiency of our grids. Mm -hmm. Here we can also gain something. And here you need power electronics to increase efficiency. And of course, the energy savings in today, electrical motors, for example, is another chance for power electronics. I think for power semiconductors, this is a real opportunity, what is happening here. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last personal question. What is your personal, <coughs> excuse me, what, your, what is your personal opinion? How long does it take uh, to get all the energy we need from renewable energies? It's all five, the, 10, 20, 50 years. Your personal opinion. I'm not sure whether I have a clear opinion about that. My opinion is it is feasible. I don't know in which time frame. What I know is, for example, today Germany has roughly 20 gigawatts installed nuclear power capacity, 20 gigawatts. This is the same size what we could realize in the North Sea by offshore wind parks. So from this point of view, I would say it's feasible to shut down, not in one year, two years, but perhaps in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So if we really want to do it, I think we can make the step from nuclear to renewable energies. Okay. Thank you very much. Martin Hierholzer from Infineon.